feature adds more options for paperless picking. Bidirectional means just that. You can start picking in one direction with the system guiding picking in reverse direction to optimize the picking process. This feature has the advantage of reducing the number of footsteps pickers are making by having them retrace their footsteps. There's a new setting in sales order preferences called Allowed Bidirectional Pick List that guides the behavior in paperless picking. This setting affects the mechanism for finding the nearest pick list when the picker clicks Next List. If selected, pick lists are ordered so that the path is optimized to support both directions, lowest to highest, and then highest to lowest path. If not selected, a single direction is used, which is lowest to highest path. Before we see a demo of the feature, let's visually see what is going to happen and why. In the scenario that I have set up to illustrate the concept, we're going to pick by shipment. Paperless picking using that bi-directional picking uh, setting selected will optimally order these pick lists so that I start picking from lowest to highest path. Notice that it will guide me to start picking the Lego from R1S1. The warehouse location's path number is 20. I have three items to pick on this pick list, so it'll send me to the next highest path number, which is in R1S2, where I'll pick that widget 100 item in red. I'll then walk over to R2S1, which has a path number of 40, the highest path number in my example. I'll pick the widget A from the first pick list, I then am guided to pick the second pick list that has just that widget A item, the blue circle. Here is where the bi-directional takes place. The system will guide me to start picking in R2S1 since I'm already there. Remember its path number is 40, and then it will reverse direction and tell me to go to R1S1, which has that path value of 20. That was the reversal or change in directions that just happened. So what would have happened if I didn't have bi-directional picking on? Well, when I go to pick list number three, the paperless picking would have had me walk over to R1S1 instead, the lowest path with a value of 20, start there and then finish off my pick list in R2S1. That arrow that you see for pick list three would have been in the opposite direction with the setting off. Now let's walk through that same visual example that I gave you using paperless picking. So you'll recall that I have those three pick lists where I've got three items, uh, one pick list, I've got two items, and then another one I've got a single item on the pick list. So here I am in paperless picking and with that setting turned on, the system would have already optimized the order of those pick lists that I'm going to uh, start picking. Um, as we had shown in our visual example, the first pick list that comes up is the one with the three items on it. So I'll begin picking from that first location with the lowest path. So here I've started to pick in R1S1, the Lego. And the next item that I'm going to pick from, or the next item that I'll pick from is the R1S2 location. So that has that widget 100 item. So I'll finish picking that. And then I'll go to the third location with the highest path and start picking the uh, final item, that widget A. So now I'll finish and go to the next pick list. So if you recall in our visual example, the next pick list up is the one that has just the single item on it that's in that R2S1 location that has the highest path. So I'm going to pick there. And then the next pick list that is up is the final pick list that has two items. So here, while I'm there in that location, here's where the bi-directional picks in, I'm going to pick from that R2S1 location, that widget A, and then I'll finish my pick in the lowest path number, which is for that Lego in the R1S1. So that's the bi-directional picking in action.